Good evening, I'm Landon with Mermaid & Press. Today, we're gonna go through what I carry in my vehicle every day, how it pertains to my regular life, either fighting or <laughs> just playing with the dog. So, let's go door by door, go around, and see what I got in here. All right, so we're gonna start where I pretty much live, okay? Not, a, not everybody gets to drive my truck. I don't have a lot of people riding with me anyway. Uh, it's dirty right now, keep that in mind. <laughs> throughout this whole deal. So, from the driver's seat, all right, think about it. My goal is just to drive, okay? I'm not, there's nothing else should be going on. Also, from the driver's seat, I need things I can get to in an emergency and I can get to from a seated position, okay? So, first thing I wanna get into is the door. Uh, door, it's readily accessible by my non-dominant hand. You can shoot, grab things. Uh, I only have very little in this door. Okay, first thing is a tourniquet. Keep it shoved in the door pocket here. Uh, this is a 2018 Ford, so I don't know if every Ford has this, but mine does. And guess what? A tourniquet fits in there pretty well, and I can still open the door. Uh, is it perfect? No. Does it hold a tourniquet? Hell yes. So, empty? Empty. Uh, you know, I don't, I might put uh, a trauma kit in there later on, but I've got another one of those anyway. So the only thing, only other things in my door, keep an extra mag for my Glock with a carrier, just in case I have to get out and throw it on. I have another mag with me. Uh, same carry ammunition I have in my pistol. Also have a fixed blade knife. Uh, this one is from, had it forever, Topps Knives. This is the Topps Knives Shadow Rider. I've had this forever. Uh, keep it pretty sharp, keep it in the door. It's nice to just have another fixed blade handy in case you have to work on something or cut your seatbelt free or whatever you need to do with a knife. So, door, that's pretty much handled. Door's pretty much for fighting. Inside, <clears throat> there is nothing under my seat. Um, I have a night eyes magnet ball thing for the front. Uh, my phone is rarely there uh, unless I'm navigating. So, if not, music's on, sit it inside. Um, extra sticks, always have an extra stick. In case you plan on getting sticky all right um zykar ashtray because it's not always cool to flick ashes out on the people behind you in the road um in the center console there's a few things uh, i'm not going to show everything in there but uh something you need in your center console you need a notepad and a pen and pencil because uh you never know when you're gonna need to write things down writing a tag number of somebody who rear-ended you and tried to run or <clears throat> Uh, your passenger needs to write down a message, anything like that. Uh, you need, and it doesn't have to be big. I have just a little like, you know, two by two by four or whatever in there, three by five. The reason you have a pen and a pencil is because it gets hot and cold in here and that pen might be useless when you pull it out. So just have the little golf pencils. Uh, steal them next time you go to mini golf. All right, grab three of them, throw one in the truck, throw one in your bag. Everything else in here, other than this, right, Wrapped around the, the headrest is my trauma kit. Uh, I've used this a few times. Uh, if you know me, you know I run into accidents a lot on my off time. It's not something I look for, it just happens to me. Um, so for me, it's good to have a trauma kit. And I keep another tourniquet on there. This is for major blowouts, right? If I get shot, if I find somebody that is critically injured on the side of the road, this has everything I need to work on them, okay? Gloves for other people and all kinds of things. That stays on the headrest dangling behind my seat. So let's move back a door and we'll see what else we got. The rear door, this is uh, typically for fighting and other emergencies because I get out of the driver door, come back here. Um, this is all critical stuff. So if I have a rifle in the truck, it sits underneath on the, on the, on the, the rear floorboard, I cover it up with a jacket. The reason you cover it up with jackets so nobody prying eyes can't see it, but also you keep a jacket in your car in case your lady friend's legs get cold because I know some of us like it cold in the truck. Always have a jacket for your lady friends. Uh, keep an extra beanie in here. Uh, I usually have a schmug, but it's being washed right now, but keep an extra beanie. I always have a mountain of these laying around, um, so keep, keep one handy. They, uh, Lord, they come in handy. Um, another thing, I keep a towel. Uh, this is mainly for the dog, right? If we're out, you know, jumping in mud or whatever. It's nice just to have a cheap dollar store towel around. I can wipe his feet off before we get on the seat cover, okay? But uh, you can also, uh, if you have a stroke victim, you can place this in their hands to, to where they don't 
after the stroke, they don't sit there and have closed fists the rest of their life. Put under somebody's head, there's a trillion reasons. Keep someone cool, keep someone warm. This is a must, and you can buy them from any you know dollar, dollar tree, family dollar. Y'all have seen this before. This is my field medic kit. Uh, everything from boo-boos to gunshots in here. Uh, I have a video going through this, but this is the bag. This is where it stays. It stays right here. So typically if I run into something, I throw my trauma kit around my waist, start putting gloves on, grab this, and we're go. Um, in the door, keep an extra pair of crappy gloves. Uh, these are shooter cut. I got the trigger finger cut out and the thumb cut out on this. Uh, these are, you know, old gloves. I wasn't going to throw them away. They've still got some life in them, so I threw them in the truck, right? Uh, magazine carrier for an AR-15 magazine. We'll get to that in a second because you can see already, okay? Uh, two sets of Cobra Cuffs. If you're into kinky stuff, this is what you need. So Cobra Cuffs, keep those handy. Three loaded AR-15 magazines. They are not all the same uh, for no reason at all. They're just the three I grabbed. So they fit perfectly in that cup holder. So I can get back here, get my rifle, throw a mag or two in my pocket. If I can, if I have time to grab a carrier, I will. And I can still, you know, keep keep concealment behind my door. Um, I also keep another bandana back here. It's a little tiny spot. Uh, that's the same kind of uses as the towel, but it's also a good sweat rag. Uh, dog leash, dog collar, shoved in the door. Same thing as the tourniquet. Up in the driver's seat. Driver's seat is not something you're going to reach in and grab stuff, so this is kind of the non-emergency area right in here in here I keep a sewing kit an extra dog leash extra power supply for phone and a Lansky sharpening puck for when I have an axe or something in here I sharpen my knife on there and whatever all you need is some water non-emergency section of this is just that it's just some maintenance tools and some extra things that I might need uh, power banks are not perfect. They're not the best thing to be keeping in a hot and cold vehicle all the time. But if you find a cheap one, throw it in the truck. You never know when you might need 3% to make a phone call. All right, so let's go to the non-emergency side. Look at some less exciting stuff. We're going to start at the front because there's less up here. My passengers, all right, if we're in a conflicted area, my passengers will have their own tourniquet and things in the door if they know how to use it. Um, they... My passenger needs to be my navigator. They need to be, uh, you know, operate the controls. They need to do a lot of things given that I am driving. So they have access to my maps in the center console. Your maps in your center console, you can pick up any map of your state or surrounding states when you stop at a truck stop, travel center, um, a welcome center, right? And get, your, get the mainly surrounding ones when you travel. They're usually free or a dollar and uh, just throw one or two in the truck. They're almost as good as a road atlas, all right? And I have a tiny road atlas in there, uh, so, and, I, and it is marked up with my stuff, so I'm not gonna show it. But write on your maps, curate your maps. Definitely don't have one from, you know, if you live in Oregon, don't have one from Texas, unless you really need it, unless you travel to Texas often, or have family there or something. Along with the notepad and things, there's an extra lighter and some matches. Uh, in the door over here, got a big bag of zip ties and an extra water bottle for the dog. So, right, as you can see, nothing exciting in here. Let's move on. Non-emergency side of the vehicle to the rear. So, in here is mainly tools and things to work on my car. I also keep some recreational things over here. We'll see that in just a moment. So, first off, we'll start with the door. Dog water bowl. Um, my dog likes to drink a lot, so I got him a big bowl. Uh, and I can throw that in a pocket or whatever. It's important to have signaling devices in your car, okay? Uh, I don't care if it's a smoke grenade or what. You need to be able to signal to aircraft, to people, in case you're stranded and have to mark your vehicle in order to be found. So one thing I have is a Viz 17 panel. Uh, it's pink on one side and orange on the other. I'm sure it just threw off the color. Uh, this thing is bright. If you shine a light on it, you can actually read from the light reflected off one of these pretty easily. Um, a waterproof boat flare, okay? Uh, if you read the instructions before you ever light one of these, but it's got a big pull cord, you rip that, and now you have fire and signaling. Um, road flares are big, 
this is small. That is the reason I have this. Uh, in the future, I may have two or three road flares around. I have a road flare in my in my uh, go bag, which I'll pull it out here in a second. And we'll look at it. But why do you need more than one flare? I don't know. If you're going to light them up, they only last 15 minutes. So these are for like I see the helicopter. Okay. Pair of work gloves. All right. Uh, cold, hot, sharp. Working wood, whatever. Keep this on this side. This isn't. These aren't tactical gloves. And a big roll of duct tape in there. All right. Inside, I have my uh, my power box. I keep it in the box because the cables and stuff. I don't want to get lost or broken. It can charge my phone. It's got a radio. It's got a light. It's got a tire pump. Um, all the things I may need to get this thing mobile and get it to a safer area. Fetch stick for the dog. Squeaker toy, chew toy. That way there are options other than the truck to chew. Uh, old CD case. If you don't know anything about old CDs, you're probably really young. Um, under the seat, keep my shred board. All right, uh, if you're not shredding, you're not living. That's some of y'all didn't know that about me. Um, behind the seat, I have a lockout kit. For unlocking people's doors and such uh, it's just nice to do be a good neighbor all right the, the tire jack and all my tools that I have checked actually works on this vehicle are back there and guess what a roll of toilet paper you need a roll of toilet paper in your car your lady friends will thank you you will thank you and it can be burned and stuff but we all know what it's gonna be used for so Let's, uh, let's go check out the go bag and where it's at. I kept this to the end on purpose, but uh, under here, I have my go bag. Uh, the water bottle won't stay on the outside. There are things in here that will come out and be on me, but I will have a video on this in the future. Uh, but it stays under here under the seat. There's a radio in there, all kinds of things. Conservative estimate for me, on being able to live out of that backpack is a week. Uh, that is still finding food. I keep some food in there, but it ain't a week's worth. It's a couple days worth. So if I can find food or get food or do some, whatever I need to do to do that, I can move on a little farther into surviving. In here, also keep a tent. This is a single person hiking tent because I don't keep it in my house so I don't you know, forget it places. In case of an emergency and I can't sleep in my truck for some reason, or someone's with me and needs to stay in a tent, I always have it. Uh, it's just an easy storage thing, and it makes me feel good. So that's pretty much everything inside my vehicle. Uh, it changes with the seasons. Sometimes I have two jackets. Sometimes I keep more water. It depends on what I'm doing and where I'm going, but that is the basic load for everything this vehicle goes through. Um, I chose this vehicle on purpose. I didn't just buy it because it was the only thing in the lot. Um, it's four-wheel drive, it's a V8, it's everything I need in something. If all you have is your two-door Focus, um, you need to have stuff in there to where you can survive in that vehicle and outside of it, or fight from that vehicle. So don't think just because you don't have a truck doesn't mean you can't keep a trauma kit in there. I don't know why this is a thing. The community is not harsh on this, but it's just a misconception. So do yourself a favor, at least get some med supplies in there and a couple days worth of food and water. You will thank yourself in the end. Also, signaling. You need, I need to stress signaling for everything you do. I can wrap that Viz 17 panel over the hood and sleep in a snowstorm. Somebody might come find me. So think about that stuff. What I want you to do after this is go to your truck and see what's in there and see how long you can live on a pack of relish that you left in the ashtray. So find out what's killing you, kick its ass, Hug your families and stay safe.